Hello, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to talk about recipe recommendation using ingredient networks. Uh, my name is uh, Chen Yuan Tan, and this is a joint work with Yu uh, Ruling and my advisor, Lada Demik. Um, so to begin with, I want to begin, uh, let you think a simple question. So um, how do we make a great dish? So I think most of you will answer with recipes. So, but today we not only read paper, uh, recipe books, we also check online recipes. So for example, like allrecipe.com, sorry the resolution is a bit low, but you know, um, so in our recipe side, we can share our reviews, we can share our homemade recipes, we can rate our, uh, our friends' recipes. So um, in, in this work, we will talk about um, our finding from our recipe, uh, our online recipes. Uh, we get our recipes from allrecipe.com and uh, we, in, uh, we crowd uh, all, all recipes including uh, cooking direction, ingredients, nutrition information, and like lots of stuff. And we also get some, uh, we get crowd all the uh, user reviews. So uh, now we, ha uh, we want to add two big research questions. So uh, the first research question is, uh, can we identify any uh, pattern or can we co uh, distill any cooking knowledge from our recipe sites? And the second is, uh, Given this, uh, if we have like we have ingredient information, can we aggregate it together as an ingredient network and to predict recipe ratings? So here is a framework of our recipe mining. So um, so uh, basically, uh, first, first we will aggregate the information of ingredients to build a, a com complement network, which is a combination of ingredients. And we also build a substitute network which models the substitutability of ingredients. And then we use this information to predict recipe ratings. Um, so, um, so let's begin with ingredients network. So, the, so then uh, now we may ask, uh, will we mix, maybe we will, you will want to mix banana with blueberry, but maybe you don't like to mix apple and cones. So uh, we can use this information to make a company, uh, to build an ingredient network, we call it as a company network, so which is made from ingredients. And so, um, so we have two design choice to give the weights of ingredient network, which could be uh, uh, the, the raw frequency of coherence or the point-wise mutual information, which measure the likelihood that two ingredients co-occur in the uh, in same uh, recipes. Uh, so here I want to show you uh, visualization of a company network. So in general, we can identify three big clusters of networks. So the first one is a sweet, uh, a sweet cluster. So the third is sweet cluster. So uh, you can see like sugar, butter, uh, white sugar, and flour, uh, and so on and so forth. And the other community is the savory community, which you can see is like garlic, olive oil, onion, and pepper. And the last one is uh, mixed drinks, like you will see vodka, juice, pineapple juice, ice, and so on and so forth. And then we want to ask, can we identify, since we know how to combine ingredients, then we want to know, can we identify another relationship between ingredients? So we introduce a network called substitution network because when we check the uh, user reviews, we will see uh, lots of users say, uh, I want to replace uh, butter with uh, uh, sour cream so or maybe so we can identify this pattern like uh, replace A with B, or you want to substitute B for A. So we can aggregate this kind of test and build a, a network called substitution network. So um, for this network, we use uh, it is a directional network, 
and the weight is defined as a conditional probability. Uh, uh, so for uh, to to define a probability to uh, substitute. So uh, here I want to show you the visualization of substitution network. So actually you can see uh, there are many communities in similar. Um, so if, if we run the community finding algorithm, we will see many communities. For example, uh, the other side is the community of the milk. Uh, you will see lots of substitute relationship between milk. Uh, it includes milk, half and half, uh, heavy cream, buttermilk, skim milk, and so on. And the other community is the cinema community, which you can see ginger, or spice, nutmeg, and so on. Um, so then, then, then we come up with the other question: Why, why do we, why do we use substitution, substitution network? What can this for? So here we, uh, we try to understand this. So we also we are thinking: uh, Can we tell any user preference from the substitution network? So we build uh, the other network called the preference network. So the preference network. It's based on, so the uh, edge is created from ingredient A to B if the rating of A is less than rating of B. So which, uh, here I give an example. So uh, say if uh, we have two recipes, the first one, recipe X, has uh, beef, ketchup, and cheese. And the second one is, uh, Contains uh, beef and pickles, and we know the rating of Y is less than rating of X. So then we can create two edges. One is from pickles to ketchup, and one is from pickle to cheese, which means the rating of pickle is less than the other, other two. So, so um, we we calculate uh, we assign weights similar to a substitute name where we use conditional probability, and we. Uh, run a correlation test, and we found the correlation is pretty high, which means the substitute network encodes user's preference. And then, after we build so many networks, we build a substitute network and company network, what can this information for? So we uh, design a, a application test, a prediction test. Uh, so the test is, um, Say if we have two recipe, uh, two recipe um, we want to predict whether one recipe rating is higher than the other one. But actually, we don't want to uh, we want to compare cheese and cake. So we only consider those recipes that consider uh, contain similar ingredients like this, like Mongolian beef and curry beef. So we want to ask user about this. Uh, so in um, so we have uh, this data information, and we have uh, include such a uh, okay. Um, we have many features. Like for example, uh, we have uh, for the baseline information, we have uh, cooking method, preparation time, the number of serving, and we also okay. We have uh, and we have all of these features, and we combine it together and see we have. We can reach about like eighty percent accuracy, and the ingredient networks give the very impressive performance. So, for the conclusion, uh, there are several takeaway message. So the first, uh, the, the the first two is uh, actually we uh, built two two network which which are complement network and substitute network which model the mixture of ingredients. And the substitutability of ingredients, and the last is we use this information and to predict recipe ratings, and we reach we achieve very impressive performance. And thank for your attention. <laughs>